page of one dash heaven, go and have a look at, and, at there's a big there's a big picture there on the left hand side of a window, is, going, like a book is, with a window. If you click yep. on that, yeah, that one. Uh, you go. So I'm hmm? okay. I, I'm there now. I didn't understand. I lost when you were saying that. The, the supreme value of uh, supreme units of value in the treasury of one heaven. Those are the two. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay, and that one's for the, mm. the supreme credits, or is yes. that a separate one also? No. So the supreme units is what would be considered the supreme credits, or is it? Yes. Time between well, if you, once you read it, that'll make that'll make perfect sense okay. to you. Okay. 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 I. I. Understand that part per se. Thank you. And then, and, and then, what I'd like you to do is, once you've read that, go to globe-union.org. Hold on, hold on. Globe, G-L-O-B-E. Hyphen union.org. I'm sorry, union. Yeah, U-N-I-O-N.org. Okay. And go and have a look at its charter. Okay. And then go and have a look how the value of supreme credits are conveyed okay. to the globe union reserve bank yeah uh, and then go to, go ahead i'm sorry and then go to americas um, that's a m e r i c a s hyphen union u n i o n dot org and open up its charter and see how the value of the currencies are conveyed from the globe union to one of the regional unions. Now, uh, if, if someone gets concerned by hearing all this and thinking, well, this sounds like uh, the New World Order, <laughs> it's a mirror. <laughs> we, uh, rights and property is a top-down concept. If you accept that only the divine creator can own anything, then it's a top-down concept. A claim is a bottom-up. So in order for a currency system to be uncorrupted and to replace their system, which puts the Pope on top and the Khazar, Ashkenazi, Zionists on top and puts all these different groups on top, you have to remove them and do a clean line from the divine down to you at your community. So these, these concepts I'm describing sound enormous, but I have said what we are doing is we are perfecting all these charters as deeds of trust with spiritual members in place. And as you come together in a state or a province, these deeds will be in place, your titles will be perfected, and as you become competent, you will elect yourselves into positions of authority and build up from there. But uh, this is, yes, it's a massive system, but it's a massive system to convey the property of the world back to you and every man and woman and away from these kazars, these parasites, these vampires. So thank you. Have a look. Uh, yeah? one, one quick follow-up. Uh, if you don't know the hour that you were extricated, how can you create... It gets your number created if you don't have that or if you're not even sure what time of day and you don't have a way to actually validate that in order to put that information in in order to get the number. Your number is validated in two things. Firstly, it, 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 is, it is the nature of the number and what it represents. And secondly, when those numbers will be connected to the register. Now, we are not yet at a stage where any court is challenging the number. I look forward to that day when a court wants to challenge the validity of the number because that will be a very stupid move on their part. We are, we are preparing the entry point for the registers so that your membership number is also reflected by being able to find it and search for it through the great register, which is connected to all the different societies. That is the validation. So the fact that you don't know an hour is meaningless. Okay, that, that's what I want to make sure, because that had come up, and I, when somebody asked me, well, what if I don't know the hour? In my case, I don't, because I don't have a way to validate it any further. It's mm -hmm. meaningless. Once, once your number is entered to the register and that's connected, that is meaningless. Now, anyone's getting concerned saying, hold on a second, are you telling me that my membership number is not validated? No. 
the, the registration process is merely uh, making that available. But all your numbers are being collected and all your numbers are being sent through. And if anyone wants to challenge that, uh, then we're more than happy to validate that your number's valid. If a court wants to challenge the number, then they have to contact us. And if they contact us, we will certainly validate that you are a valid member. But it will be automated. So thanks for your questions. I hope I answered them for you. Yeah, you did. Thank you very much, Frank, and thanks, Terry. Thank you, okay. Ted. Yep. Okay. Uh, next is Winona Tenten. Let me see. Winona Tenten, you're unmuted. Thank you. Say hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. Good job, Frank. Um, uh, thank you. I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I just wish people would not enter into courts of confusion, uh, mirror injustice, bond schemes, the whole rotten hole. Um, uh, my comments have been uh, effectively to remove the Christian aspect, as it has been invalidated by Her Majesty's claim last year that Christ is a pharaoh. Uh, kind of puts everything into a different ballpark uh, as far as any type of even remedial relief. Uh, it just bothers me so much. It gets me very emotional when I think of the things people have to know to prevent being tricked, used badly, and uh, deceived completely. Uh, it just really breaks my heart. Uh, that, that is not justice. That's just us, just, just ice. It's just something else going on. So it's nice that you're going to educate people. I really appreciate that. I think it's beautiful that people should understand what they're subject to that they do not know or understand and must comply by force of arms. Uh, really breaks my heart because there is always the original common law and most people probably on this call are from colonies around yes. the world, no doubt. So the true checkmate, I feel, is in fact demonstrable, understandable, explainable in the language of fiction, uh, the matter of common law tied to a creator, tied to an original people of that land uh, who may in fact serve as relief in the matter of the proof of claim to safety and protection for colonials. See, your own system has forsaken you all. Yeah, so, what have you got? To, I mean, I, I, I really thank you saying what you're saying tonight. And, and, and I said, I really respect everyone's opinions on this. And, and, and it is important that, that everyone has a feel that they have an opportunity to express their opinions. Have you got a question tonight, or did you just want to just sort of cover those points? I wanted really to cover those points, uh, say hello to you. Um, we do require some paperwork in the yes. matter of colonial children obeying our lawful institution. Yes. Uh, yes, but we can talk about that sometime soon. All right, look, I really appreciate what you're saying, and, and, and sorry that it's, we're so limited on time tonight, but look, I really appreciate what you're saying, and none of this is possible. Remember... I am out of the picture from Judgment Day. December 21st, 2011, Franco Collins has nothing to do with this. I have 12 months with all of you and everyone else we can get to make this work. But it, its success will be in your hands, not mine. Because it is an idea that is an open source idea and a structure and a, and a model. So thank you and I look forward to speaking again soon. Thanks. Okay, take care. Thank Good you. Okay, next question from caller David Lewis. David, are you there? Hi, yeah. Uh, some of your questions may be answered if you study your bankruptcy laws back in 1933. The international banking scheme that took place against all nations, it wasn't just the United States that went bankrupt, it was the entire world. Yep, absolutely. And a lot of your, uh, the international banksters took control of all governments, 
and destroyed their constitution by a fraudulent scheme called the Federal Reserve. Yep. If you check into your your uh, documentation, I think a lot of your questions will be answered. They did not only destroyed or stole our money from us, they set up a de facto government in every nation under their control. They certainly did. Now, have you got a question that you want to share with people? Well, really basically to state that because it might yeah. solve or, or answer a lot of people's question as to why when they contact their government entities – they're being ignored. I, I think it is an important point. There, there is a lot of fantastic information about the Fed Reserve. Probably the best is the stuff that came out less than a month ago, as you know, under the Congress, uh, which revealed for the first time the, the uh, total bill for, uh, for the bailout, which instead of being a, bit, instead of being a trillion was 12.3 or 4 trillion, I think, last count. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there. But given the time tonight, um, I thank you for that, and I think it's important to mention that point. I'm glad you did about the Fed Reserve in 1933. But um, other than that, let's, let, let's keep going on that. But I, I do think it's important that we have available to folks on these sites, particularly the University of Acadia, where we make available the kind of learning material that can help people, and I think that was a very good one to suggest. So thanks for that. Thank you. Great. Thank you, David. Uh, I'm sorry, if you have a question, you can put yourself back in the queue. Anyone that has another question, by pressing star 8 on your phone. We have a question from the chat real quick, and then I'll get back to the callers. Frank, please explain in as much detail as possible, the process for bringing rent and arrears up state. Okay. Um, I, I will give a quick summary, bearing in mind that this is an area of, of notes that we are working on to perfect for you. The, what you are attempting to do, firstly a bank, from what we can hear, and this has already been validated several times, the banks will refuse to accept any more payments against a uh, mortgage when they start to claim that you're in default. They refuse, which, which is immoral, but they do that nonetheless. The second is that the courts appear to refuse unless they are heavily coerced um, and, and really exposed to accept any money uh, as rent and arrears. But what you can do is have your check, have your, um, and don't have a bank check because if they refuse it, then you'd be sitting on it. But have a check, have uh, your statement of, of uh, months that you're paying, go down to if it's a foreclosure, there'll be an existing case, and request to have it put in and deposited as a, as a matter of your defence. When they refuse, make sure you've already prepared for the clerk a, a affidavit which the clerk will sign or must sign to say, I refused to accept these funds in lieu of rent, rent arrears. Now, of course, the clerks will freak out, but all you need is evidence that you've attempted to make payment and they've refused. Now, if they've refused your payment, they cannot claim you're delinquent. This is the crucial legal fact. Once you make the genuine attempt, and it must be genuine, to uh, make a rent arrears payment, then you can no longer be declared delinquent. No court can declare you delinquent. Now, there'll be further techniques because this is a, a tricky area by them. They know all these tricks and they play all these tricks, but that's just one hopefully one answer for you on what they're doing. All right? Thank you. Hello, I'm Terry. Hello, Wayne. Frank. Hi. This is Ryan. Hi, who's that? Doing? Hi. Hi. Hey, I've got an update on SS4 applications, if you have a minute. Sure. Okay. This is what happened. Last call, I had explained that we used a, a fax number, and we sent off eventually 
four SS4 applications.